Tonight's guest first appeared on Weather World in July 2017. At that time, Zena Cardman was a Penn State PhD student who had been chosen as a NASA astronaut candidate. She was headed to Houston for astronaut training. And now four plus years later, it's a pleasure to welcome back astronaut Zena Cardman to Weather World. Hi, Zena. Hey. Great to, great to Hi. see you again. Thank you so yeah. much. It's really great to see you again, finally. Yeah, really. Well, well, let's turn the clock back. Take us through some of the key elements and requirements of your astronaut training and evaluation process. Sure. Yeah. The first two, two and a half years of the program really is basic training. Um, a lot of us come in with relevant backgrounds, whether that's as a pilot or as an engineer or scientist. Um, but there are some basic fundamentals that we all have to learn. And so that's everything from learning the Russian language to uh, learning robotics on the space station, all of the emergency procedures, all of the engineering systems. Um, those of us who are not pilots coming in learn how to fly the T-38 jet. Uh, and we also learn how to do spacewalks. So that's something that none of us had experience in prior to becoming astronauts. So it's a really uh, diverse two years, two and a half years of training. And uh, after that, that, my class, the Turtles, graduated and uh, qualified to be assigned to missions. And so that's where we are now. We're yeah. all generally assigned to technical jobs, um, either that's supporting ongoing missions, developing new ones, uh, or training to fly ourselves. Well, we'll come back to the Turtles in a moment because I really like that. But <laughs> back to the training, what part did you find personally most challenging or perhaps most exhilarating? Oh, gosh. Yeah, you know, actually, I think my answer for both of those questions is probably the same. Uh, for me, the spacewalk training was both the most fun and the most challenging. Okay. Uh, the spacesuits that we use are really interesting. I, you know, I expected it to be a physical challenge, um, but learning how to operate in a pressurized suit that uh, isn't really like wearing an outfit so much as it is uh, driving a vehicle with your body is a really interesting mental challenge. Um, and then combining that with learning all of the uh, exterior hardware on the space station, learning what goes where and how to repair it. Really, really interesting challenge and uh, one that takes a long time to learn. And let's go back now to the turtles. How many astronauts are in your class? And where did this class nickname of turtles come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are 13 turtles. We are currently the newest class, although we are getting ready to announce a new class very, very soon. So that's a forefront on all of our minds. Um, the turtles come from all over the place, uh, lots of different backgrounds, and we were named actually at our announcement ceremony. Um, the tradition is that the previous class names the incoming class, so now the turtles will get to do that too. Um, but at our announcement, uh, Vice President Michael Pence at the time uh, was there and read uh, basically an idiom from his time growing up where if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there alone. Um, the sentiment is meant to express that those of us on that stage hadn't gotten there alone on our own. Um, so yeah. this is really meant to be a testament to our family, our friends, mentors, teachers who had gotten us to where we are today. Yeah. Take us through a typical day in your life now as an astronaut, which I presume is a full-time job. And I I'm assuming here that you're on Earth and not in space. I mean, are, are you based in Houston or Florida? Do you get any downtime? Yeah, I am based in Houston. That's my uh, kind of forever home these days. Um, but lots of travel, of course, for training um, all over the United States and also all over the world. Um, so right now, my day to day is, well, it's, it's different every day. I'm currently training uh, as a backup crew member for a space flight. And so that means uh, learning actually really a lot of the same things that I learned as an astronaut candidate. Um, but now more in depth and more geared towards a specific mission. I'm also learning an actual launch vehicle these days. So I spend a lot of time in Hawthorne, California, uh, out near LA where SpaceX headquarters is and uh, also all over the world. So I spent a lot of the last several months in Russia and in Germany um, learning from our international partners since it is an international space station. So that's been a really fun part of the training flow. Have any members of your class already flown into space or are scheduled to do so? 
Yeah, actually, two of the turtles have launched actually really recently. They launched in November of this year, so just this month. Um, and they're getting ready to do their first spacewalk actually on the International Space Station. So it just, it makes me so happy to see my classmates, uh, people who are, I mean, they really feel like friends and family more so than they feel like colleagues uh, doing what they do best and just absolutely having an awesome time in space. And so you're actually training right now as a backup in case one of the astronauts planned on a coming mission is unable to go? Yeah, that's the idea. Um, of course, it's very unlikely that I would fly myself. And so really my goal here is just to be as proficient as I possibly can be and be there to support the crew members who are flying so that when it is my time, I'll be all the more ready. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you have any inkling when your turn might come or or will you just be pulled aside one day rather unexpectedly and told you're going to space? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yes and no. I have some inkling of an idea, and I think you'll see all of the members of my class flying in just the next couple of years. Uh, it's a really exciting time in spaceflight because we have so many different options for vehicles to fly on and missions to do. So some of us are learning the U.S. commercial crew vehicles, uh, SpaceX Dragon right now. Uh, we also have people supporting Boeing Starliner. Uh, and we also have colleagues who are launching from Baikonur on uh, Russian Soyuz. So lots of different options. Um, but of course, that also means that there are lots of, uh, lots of logistical puzzles, I guess we could say, and lots of shifting people around to make sure that we have the right complement for the right mission at the right time. So long story short, I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, really excited to see all of my class flying soon. Zina, I wish we had more time. Uh, we will definitely check back with, uh, with you in the future, but thank you for joining us uh, from Houston. Astronaut Zena Cardman, um, thank you so much. My pleasure. It's been great to see you again. Same with you. Take care. And we will be back in a moment with more. <laughs> 